welcome everyone to our weekly VEP Q&A session. And I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, Adam is not able to be here today. He is offsite at a strategic uh, engagement. So you'll just be getting me. So it may be really quick. <laughs> we'll see how things go. I, I do have uh, several things that I want to cover uh, today and also want to make sure I have enough time to respond to any of the, the live questions we get from the chat window. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that for anything else coming in and uh, run through a few uh, quick items for today to just kind of keep us moving along here. Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. I want to go back to something that we have shared in the past and that is our, our VEP uh, membership uh, portal. So once you're here in the portal, we have a lot of resources available to you. I want to mention specifically our team leader track. Now this has been in the past. Uh, the material in this track has been part of our client engagement excellence program that we've been working and walking several people through. We think this is really, really valuable information for organizations especially those that are wanting to build a comprehensive uh, program within their practice to manage strategic engagement, the clients to, you know, something that falls under this broad umbrella of VCIO services. So we've, um, we, I've really enjoyed working with um, many of you guys and delivering this. We've refined it and we're breaking it down now into eight sessions. For those of you who might have been following along for a while, we seem to kind of go back and forth. We started with hour sessions. We actually went to three hour sessions uh, and, and a few back and forth, but uh, we're constantly trying to find the right fit for you guys to be able to present this information in its most engaging and relevant format. So we, from what we've heard and some of uh, the practices we've run through, we're gonna go back to our one hour sessions. We do need to have a bit more of those than last time because we have quite a bit of information we want to cover and we're making sure that we have time in these to get a little practical and in some sessions we'll be jumping into the portal to to click through a few items and, and some run some tests so that we, we begin generating some momentum just as soon as possible in these sessions and then in a few of the other ones, we have some worksheets that we're gonna break out on. And again, what we want to kind of go through these exercises. So we begin generating momentum just as soon as possible to get these tracks up and running for you guys. So the team leader track, uh, if you are interested in it now, the content is, uh, like I said, we, we've, we've put this together. We've got a good program now. I'm very excited about it. We have one last session for this year, for 2019 in our four set or five sessions, excuse me, uh, hour and a half format. So if you wanna squeeze one of these in before the end of the year, we can do that. After that, when you click the sign up link, we'll have a couple of tracks. Uh, I've already got them loaded up. We haven't got them added to the website yet, uh, but we have tracks beginning July 7th and, I'm sorry, January 7th and January 9th for 2020. So we can uh, get this uh, session uh, booked and, and uh, queued up on our calendars. If you guys are interested in that, please uh, follow this link here. If you got any more questions about what that actually looks like, certainly uh, reach out to us. You can reach us at coaching at virtualc.biz or you can also contact me directly, skip at virtualc.biz and be glad to answer any questions that you may have about that. All right, let me, like I said, uh, I'm, with Adam out here, I wanna make sure I am uh, keeping an eye on our chat windows and making sure that uh, we've got everything covered there. So bear with me while I shuffle around a few windows. All right, I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're still on track. All right, so um, again, the team leader track, very excited about that. I really enjoy working with you guys and developing that and helping you get uh, your practices around VCIO services up and running in your organization. So look forward to engaging with you there. The second thing I want to dive into is again, uh, connecting and following up on a um, 
question that we had, I don't know if it was last week's VEP session or the week before, uh, inquiring about a disaster recovery and, and planning tool and a template out there for that. And so uh, Adam has the, the beta version of this. It, uh, if you can see here on my screen, it's uh, our disaster recovery planning beta. If you don't have access to that in the VEP portal and you want to be uh, on the, the, the beta section, let us know. I'm not sure if this is this particular beta is in there for general consumption yet or not, but we can, uh, we can get this to you. So I see uh, Josh is uh, in our panel uh, today and uh, he's happy that we have it. So I thought I'd run through it just real briefly so we can talk about some of the high levels. Uh, to be honest, I started looking at this about uh, 35 minutes ago. So I haven't really dived into this just yet. This is kind of fresh off, fresh off the presses, so to speak. But uh, we do want to get this in front of you guys. Uh, we would really appreciate any feedback on this. We would love to, to tweak this and, and design it so it is specifically what you're, for what, what you're looking for. Now, um, right off the bat, we, we can see this is just a pretty generic uh, template. We'd obviously want to create some additional content widgets in the front of it to kind of brand it and set it up, uh, kind of set the stage, so to speak for what we're wanting to do and define some goals. I'm, I'm really big on the agendas. And it's kind of odd because, you know, I'm not really an agenda follower uh, in some cases, you know. So I've, have, I've had to learn to do that. And I think it's, it's a very valuable exercise and a very valuable tool in what we're doing here in our engagements with our clients because we need to be on task. We really need to be on track. You know, we've had several conversations over the last few weeks with, with many of our clients and the challenge is always is we have a, we try to have a quarterly business review and it gets delayed for one reason or another and the client reschedules and reschedules and, and we've sat down to what is, you know, on paper supposedly supposed to be a quarterly business review, but it's been three quarters since we've had the last one. And so essentially it turns into an annual review because there's so much that needs to be discussed, but at the same time, it gets derailed because we're talking about tickets, which are items that really need to be on some sort of monthly or maybe even weekly sort of engagements with our clients. So I think the agendas are incredibly valuable to keep us on track and make sure that we're, uh, we're hitting the goals that we need to be for each of these engagements. So anyway, that uh, would be prepended with this. To, to match the particular setting that you're delivering this report in. And so now we begin with the, uh, the, the assessment. And I like these, these uh, sliders give us the opportunity to create more subjective gradings in our systems. If you've walked through any of our stack sort of assessments, you know how much I really appreciate the binary approach we take to those making statements and then following it up with either you're compliant or not compliant with this statement. And for a, a you know, a objective, very analytical approach, I think that's great. But when we're sitting down and beginning to have these conversations with our clients, sometimes we need a little bit of more scale in this. And, and sometimes these, these are, you know, not necessarily binary sort of questions. Are redundant systems in place? Well, we have some, but maybe not all. Uh, some of them, the critical systems are all in place, but we have some ancillary systems that maybe they don't have the redundancy that we may want, but can't necessarily afford right now. So it, anyway, this gives us the opportunity to, to uh, create the right level of assessment in, as we go over with our clients. Along the way, if you're not familiar with these, the, the scorecard uh, widgets that come in here gives us these little percentage dollars, and we can break these down in various categories. Now, just quickly looking here, I, I don't see any that Adam has configured to email out to a client, but we do have a feature where if um, we'll get a little um, square with an outbound um, arrow in it that will pop up, uh, within some of these widgets, if we configure it in the setup, 
Uh, it's just a binary deal. It's one or zero in the, uh, in the setup, if you've seen that there. And that allows you the ability to generate a link and you can send it out to different people. So if you have one element of this that you want to go over with your clients in a session, but perhaps there is another one here on the strategy that you really want to get feedback from someone who's not going to be a part of that engagement or maybe it's a third party that they're using. Maybe we could create another segment here around the uh, features or you know, capabilities that our ERP program has. And we would send this out to our, our representative, you know, our, our, our rep at, uh, at our partner there and have them fill it out for the client. And, and be able to bring that information back into the system. So there's a lot of possibilities that we can get with these scorecard widgets. And then once we see, let's see, I believe he's out of here. So here we have a, a scorecard summary. So now we can begin to roll these up into some larger areas. Again, now this is following underneath the, the principles of our, of our four pillars of BCI services being infrastructure, services, risk, and strategy. And so this allows us to blend this into our, our overall management approach. And as we dive into each one of these, rather than creating a different category for each session that we're in by organizing and structuring this within these four pillars, infrastructure, service, risk, and strategy, we are able to develop a comprehensive management solution for our clients. So in this case, in the context of disaster recovery and specifically around our infrastructure, we're currently at 46% based on the somewhat random uh, selections that I made in there. So uh, just another good way to uh, engage with your clients and, 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 and these numbers, you know, I, I often get asked, what do the numbers mean? You know, is this is this just a random number? No, it's not entirely random. It, it is based on information that we're collecting and managing here. The real value in these numbers is now we have some specific data to work with. If we look at a client and whatever their infrastructure is, if it comes up with 46, that's great. It could be 64, that the number doesn't really matter, but we have a place to start and then inherently through this, we have a place to grade our scale, ourselves and show progress as we begin to identify whatever gaps that we uncover in our client engagements here, you know, in this case around infrastructure and disaster recovery. So again, these, these are great tools, they're great conversation pieces, they allow us to, that they're just a tool. Uh, they're, they're a tool to help us manage that IT conversation with our clients. So we have, again, here the, the scorecards being a little more um, variable in our responses, but it looks like Adam has also built in some more specific items here. So now we can get in here and we can begin looking specifically at our, our client areas and, and identifying things that may need to be addressed or not. I, again, I like being able to tag these in a very binary format to say that this is something that's specific that needs to be addressed right now, or this is something that we're gonna look at in the future, or you're already compliant. Well, whatever the case may be, having these values is just simply a great tool to help steer and manage the conversation with our client. So again, like I mentioned with you guys, I've only seen this one for just a, a few minutes myself, so I haven't dove into the details of this one. I'm, I'm scanning a few things here right now, so it looks like we're protecting the crown jewels. So, uh, you know, odd things that jump out as I, as I read quickly. So uh, I like, you know, how we can cover these. And again, we can always, these, these templates are a great starting spot for you and your organization definitely feel free to jump in there, add different elements, take out things that you, you feel do not apply. We can even do categories. I really like this, uh, not only you know, at a high level category, but the subcategories. We can also turn these off or turn these on as they pertain to a client. So keep, keep that in mind as you go through there. They do uh, 
properly affect the score by turning it off. We remove it from the scoring calculations. And that, re again, really helps us keep an accurate number to, to manage with our clients. It looks like we, we need to do a few more things. We, we want to develop these projects as well. This is where I would love to get some more feedback from you guys around the projects and what do those look like. Now, before we go too far and, and we're, we're constantly discussing this, what goes into these projects? It is, remember, a high level discussion about the projects, not a detailed definition of the project. So if we say here, do you have a plan for natural disasters? You know, briefly, we're going to describe what does that mean? Have you run through the, the top natural disasters that would affect your geography and your business? Have you talked about and described the plan, built a plan that you would implement should something happen. Now remember, we're not going to be building those plans in this. We, we want, to, the project is to uncover, do they have these things? And if not, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna begin defining and building that project out with our clients. There, there's gonna be a lot of scope work that needs to go into that so that we can get a number. But to start, before we do any of that, we've got to be able to have a point to discuss and, and move it around on a calendar if need be, or track it where we're going to, when, when and where we're gonna engage with it, so to speak. But the, the project definitions, remember, they need to be very high level and not low level. So we can, we can actually put these out pretty quickly without consuming a lot of time or setting ourselves up for a lot of effort in the future to refine these and redo these for every version release that comes out on our product or slight change in the solution set. We shouldn't have to go back to our product recommendation, our project recommendations and, and change everything there. Those should be uh, general enough to accommodate those. So it looks like we've got some more information here uh, built around the testing schedule. What does that look like? We've templated out a few uh, sections there. These could be replicated for any, any subcategory that you have there. And again, filling all this information in just provides us with a, a data repository for the plan. Here it is. Again, we don't have to go into great detail on these. The important part is to run through the major elements to make sure that we are, are covering our bases on this. We have all the right pieces in motion. And then once they're in motion, then we can manage them to completion. And at that point, then we will have all the specific details around what we're trying to accomplish with this one. So that's it. Uh, again, jump into the, the portal, give this a try. I'll scroll back up here again. It's uh, the disaster recovery planning. That template should be there. Uh, I believe for most of the VEP users, if not, let us know and we can get that added for you. All right, and the last thing I wanna jump into today is around our projects, uh, again, and the service catalog. So uh, we've been working with several of you guys on the technology stack assessment. And in that, we have uncovered a little bit of a bug. I, I guess you'd call it a bug. I don't know, it's just a, you know, the, the evolution of the platform and our changes here. Uh, let's see, if I can find the right one. Let's use this one here. And if we'll go down to our assessment section and we'll pick one a bit at random and dive in here, this is the area where we've seen a few challenges come up. On the type, it says service. And our recommendation here, if we go out and look in our project template library, we'll, we'll find this, this T TSA website management project and in that it is defined as a project, not a service. And we want to address this little issue. So if we hit the drop down list, we see we have three options here. 
a service, a project, or a task. And so what has happened over uh, a period of time as we've kind of moved through the platform's updates, we've got a little bit of separation here. So these are listed as services, but I believe these projects might have been created when they were both, the, the option was available for a service or a project. So if we don't make any changes to the template, all right, if I leave it alone, it works just fine. But if I need to get in and change anything, we want to make sure that we select these as project. And then in our window here, we will find all of these settings again. Here we go, our TSA website management. So just a little, little quirk in our report here over time, it has evolved and created the, this little pick up around selecting these types whenever you go to make a change. Now we're due for probably at the first of the year. So just a few weeks away, we're going to have an update to the TSA. I'm excited to be working on that. We're going to include a, uh, another section, another series of categories around cloud centered services. Uh, right now, if you look over the technology stack assessment, it is focused on uh, a bit more of an on-prem uh, solution set or, or set of uh, technologies with very little cloud-based services. And what we intend to do is simply add the appropriate categories for cloud-based services and give you the opportunity to turn those categories on or off as you need to, as you engage with the client. We know that many of you are, you know, well in the, the path to migrating your clients to more cloud-based services. We're talking with several of you guys and, and you're there. I mean, it, it's the rare instance when you have on-prem infrastructure out there today. So we want this technology stack assessment to be a good starting point for all of you guys, no matter where your, your focus is on your technology. And as your stack changes over the years, as you know, that gun technology is, is always evolving on us, as your stack changes, we want to be able to have the flexibility here so that you don't have to necessarily gut and redo your whole template. We can simply begin to hide some of these categories and reveal others that are now pertinent that weren't in the past. So uh, look forward to, uh, to that coming out very soon. But again, if any of you, I, I fielded several questions via email th this week regarding this little quirk in the system. By design, we want these to be defined as projects. They'll, they'll work a little bit better somewhere along the way. There was uh, a little bit of hiccup again that, that caused this change. So by uh, flipping that to project, everything should get back on track, but it will only affect you if you're trying to make changes. The, the template that's out there now will run correctly in, in its current format. So uh, nothing, nothing has been broken too severely. We just need to make some little tweaks to keep everything running along. All right, guys. So that is the items that I wanted to cover today. And I've been keeping an eye on the chat window here. We haven't had anything uh, particular come up that uh, I think we want to talk about in our session today. So I'll give uh, everyone just a minute more to uh, look at that and see if there are any more questions coming up. Uh, I'll be happy to, to dive into those. Let's see, I'm trying to, uh, I think someone was typing quickly and not quite sure what your question was there. We'll uh, give someone a minute here. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's Josh, uh, I'll look over there. If you could uh, clarify that for me a little bit. Uh, ah, okay, so uh, what should be leveraging outside of the, the stack audit, the strategy report, the Office 365 report, and now the disaster recovery report. Uh, I, I think that in, in many aspects that does cover many of the elements we're looking at. If we kind of go back to our, our four pillars that were, oops, this tab here. If we, if we look at our four pillars, the infrastructure, service, risk, and strategy, that we're, we're working with our clients. These are, 
are where we need to be focusing our time. So if we look at this, the in infrastructure, the technology stack assessment is a great uh, foundational tool that will help us out with this one for risk, uh, the disaster recovery, and and again, there there's another report in, on the on the back burner that we're working on uh, around a security assessment. Those will will help us out with this one. Strategy, uh, we do have a variety of strategy templates out there. And around service, uh, that's a good point. Uh, we do have a, it, the, the template is out there. It is a best practices assessment. And it, it mirrors and, and hooks up directly with our infrastructure stack assessment. Because remember, if, if you've been through how we, how we work this, we, if we have a technology stack out there. If we have a component, our examples that we talk about all the time is LastPass. LastPass is the product that we have as part of our stack. Then we can say, here are the best practices in utilizing LastPass. If we haven't yet identified the stack, it makes it really hard to identify the best practices. So we see a lot of people still building and refining in the infrastructure pillar here and not as many people in the service one, but uh, it's out there. I believe it's called an IT best practices assessment. We abbreviate it as BPA just because we have to have uh, TLAs, right? Three letter acronyms. So we have to have those out there. So the, the BPA is available. Now we are waiting on managed services platform for an additional feature release that is going to be coming early 2020. And that associates the best practice tasks with the, um, the best practice template. So we have, I believe there are 40 or 50 tasks that are out there. Uh, they're, they're shells of tasks that we need to do for each of those frameworks. They're meant for your technical team to come in and put your specific details. Obviously, you know, if you guys are using LastPass, you're going to have a specific set of instructions for your team in the best practices. If you're using a different product for password management, the last pass details is not going to make any sense for you. So it is a, it's a shell, it's a framework for your team to come in and put your, your, your SOPs or however you want to define that within the task. But uh, that, that feature is not available yet. So if you're not seeing that, I'll have to double check. Uh, I, I tried loading the template. And then when we realized we couldn't connect the tasks uh, to a template library like we do with a project library, we might have rolled that back a little bit. So I'll double check, uh, but keep an eye on that. Best Practice Assessment or BPA is, is the template that is, is currently created. We're just waiting on the final uh, feature release from Managed Services Platform to get that pushed out to you guys. So I will double check on that. And, and let you guys know uh, wh where the status is on that. So uh, back to uh, your, your question there about, you know, what, what reports do we need to be looking at? I, I'd say we need to have at least one defined for each of these pillars. But bear in mind, we want to, I know sometimes the way we approach these and the way we tackle them, it, this makes this, this step a little bit harder. We want to remember that our engagements and our tools are two completely separate things. So if we sit down and have a strategy session with our clients, we may use one of the strategy templates that are out there and, and go through that. However, that's not the exclusive way to do that. We can sit down and have a strategy session with our client. Maybe we're doing a SWOT analysis. For me personally, the tools that I need to do a SWOT analysis is a whiteboard and a dry erase marker. So, you know, I would not have, for me, my approach on that, and again, everybody's a little bit different. My approach is to kind of remove all of the technologies that I can from the environment and just focus on the human connection. Adam and I have mentioned that several times, to really engage with your clients. That's why I really like the whiteboard. I use the quadrant, you know, Adam uses the columns, however you do it, it is fine, but get in front of your clients and, and get, uh, you know, a little animated. It's always kind of good, you know, to, to get involved with them and, and get out the whiteboard on the SWOT exercises and begin to write information there. It's, it's, it's a bit more tactile and I believe it's a bit more engaging, 
but you, you may look at it differently and you may want to use the SWOT uh, template that is in there. There's a widget in our strategic report uh, for doing a SWOT and we've templated out so that you could sit down and type that information in in the same format while engaging with your client, you can put that information directly into the report. So uh, I had a bit of a tangent there, I apologize for that. But uh, again, for each one of these pillars, we want to make sure that we are engaging with our clients to manage and, and uncover what's needed to do, well, what's needed to support this and, and manage it properly. We're gonna do that a couple of different ways. We're gonna do it through engagements and in each engagement, we're gonna have a defined tool because remember to scale this up properly, we don't want to just be telling our team, hey, run out there with uh, the clients and, and, and see how their services are and make sure everything's working right. All right, we're gonna set ourselves up for failure there. There's no ability to scale, to replicate, uh, to manage on that. So if we're going to identify our, our efforts to, to address service, to quantify this and manage it, then we're gonna need to define a tool. In this case, it would be a best practices assessment. And so our, our template there would be, you know, engage with the client and conduct a best practices assessment. Does that happen annually? Does that happen quarterly? Well, it kind of depends on our cadence, what we're doing. If we're well established in our infrastructure, our stack assessment, we may want to roll over and begin doing quarterly BPA reviews with our clients. If we haven't yet defined the stack to where it needs to be, some of the BPA assessments just really don't make sense. We might have to push those a little bit further down the calendar. Again, this is all going to be unique from client to client, but by identifying these four pillars and tracking them specifically within the managed service platform, we can make sure that we have a plan to engage properly with our clients and keep the ball moving as we manage these areas of their business. All right, guys, I appreciate the, uh, <clears throat> the, the questions and, and comments here in the chat session. Uh, I look forward to working with you guys uh, in the coming weeks. Keep in mind, we do have a couple of uh, ongoing sessions. We have our strategy track, track and our operations track. <clears throat> the operations track will be here in just a few minutes to today. If you want to jump in on that, we're going to be talking about preparing for QBR and, and what that looks like. So we'll get practical with the tool and talk about some of the things that we, we use to get ready for those QBRs. And again, keep in, keep in mind if you want to uh, put your team or your, specifically your team leaders, we need some decision makers uh, is really important in this team leader track. Uh, we do have one final session in, uh, in our five session format for uh, the end of this year. And we have new sessions that will be showing up. They start January 7th. They're not here on the website just yet, but they will be in the next few days. So uh, check back for that. All right, I don't see any other, uh, any other questions in our chat windows here. So we'll wrap up our session today. I appreciate it and we will see you guys again next week. Thanks.